Hey adults, do you miss being able to trick or treat on Halloween? Yeah! Well, you're in luck. We have two ways for you to trick or treat as adults. You can spend a lot of money to go to Oogie Boogie Bash at Disney's California Adventure Park. Uh, what if you're a millennial who's in massive debt because the economy is rigged and rent is too high? Then you should go with our second option. There's a city called Heron where you wear tons of DLC costumes while trick or treating. Oh damn! Is it all free? Yes! Of course, all the candy is held by zombies who get especially aggressive at night, and other trick-or-treaters might try to fight you for your candy if online multiplayer is turned on. What? What? Just being honest. So what will it be? Zombie-infested town, or the expensive, happiest place on Earth? Hmm. If I go to a zombie town, I might die. On the other hand, if I go to Disneyland, I also have to pay for food and a hotel, and then I end up in even bigger debt. Ah well, zombies it is. This is Dying Light for the Nintendo Switch. Set in the fictional Middle Eastern city of Haran, Dying Light has you playing as Kyle Crane, an undercover agent on a mission to recover a sensitive stolen file from a former agent who defected and now wants to use that file for blackmail. That by itself usually makes for a spy thriller, but this town also happens to be infected by a plague that has turned its residents into flesh-hungry zombies. In many ways, the story feels like something you might see in the Walking Dead universe. Aside from a government agent still existing, it feels similar with its drama, its character development, its plot twists, and its post-apocalyptic politics. But I feel like this game is way scarier than The Walking Dead. It is a very interesting story that did a good job of keeping me invested in what was happening and the role I had to play in the game's events. Dying Light originally came out six years ago on PC, Xbox One, and PS4. Being that the Switch didn't come out until two years later, I'm actually curious as to why it took this long for the system to get this game when other third-party games from that long ago made their way over to the Switch within a year or two. If the visuals were that amazing on the Switch version, then I can understand why. That's not quite the case, but that's also not to say that the visuals are terrible. While they are a bit muddier and less polished than the other versions, they're still fairly solid, especially remembering that this game is open world. There's still enough polish to the graphics that you can feel immersed in this infected city with how gross the zombies look, how your human friends and foes are designed, and how run down the city is, and that the frame rate manages to stay consistent. This is the kind of game where a consistent frame rate is really important, so in that regard, the developers did a good job with preserving that quality for this port. The sound design for Dying Light is really good though. Most of the voice actors give great performances to add life to the characters you interact with. While there isn't a lot of music used, when it is there it really emphasizes the mood of the situation whether it's a dramatic scene between humans or a terrifying zombie scene. The best part is the sound effects. For a game about zombies, every sound effect sounds realistic and intense. The zombie snarls, the crash of a lead pipe on a zombie's head, everything. It all makes this horror experience even better. Dying Light's attention-grabbing trait more so than the zombies is its free-running. Within the first few minutes, Crane is trained to free-run from rooftop to rooftop as a means of avoiding the dead. Now in other games where you play as an overpowered badass, this might seem like a pointless mechanic. But in Dying Light, it's absolutely vital. Zombies aren't that easy to kill quickly, so it's easy to get swarmed if you're on the ground level for too long. Plus, they do quite a bit of damage if you let them get too close. So I ended up using the free running to my advantage as much as possible to the point where I was playing the old childhood game, The Floor is Made of Lava. Except the lava is zombies. Now, this isn't to say there's no combat. In fact, there's plenty of combat. You can still kill these zombies. It's just that it takes a while to get weapons that are efficient at putting them down fast enough to face them head on. A big reason for that is the Breath of the Wild-like crafting system. As you scavenge for parts in crates and off the dead, you can then use those parts to create all kinds of helpful items from weapons and med kits to lockpicks and other items. Also like Breath of the Wild, some weapons do more damage than others and they take damage as you use them until they eventually break into unusable sticks. But in this game, if that happens, you can fix the weapon with found parts or use other parts to upgrade the weapon to make it stronger. This way you can stand a better chance against the zombies. Sure, they do take a lot of damage before they die from melee weapons, but sometimes you do get these epic slow-mo shots when you land a killing blow to the head, and I admit those are fun to watch. Trick or treat, motherfucker. Once you start finding and building projectile weapons, it does make a big difference in dealing with the dead, except that's still challenging because the game uses the logic that gunfire noise attracts more to your location. So you're better off with the bow and arrows, which I actually really liked because it's quiet, a headshot is a kill shot, and like in Zombie U, you can retrieve your arrows so you can use them again. It quickly became my favorite weapon for those reasons. Now, most of the game as you're playing the story, you're running errands to the different camps you encounter to get on their good sides. But this is a true open world experience in that there are other things to do in the city. 
mainly saving citizens in danger, exploring buildings for more supplies, fighting other humans for their found supplies, and clearing out safe houses so that you can use them to rest during the night. This is very helpful because the game actually works on a day and night cycle and it does make a difference. During the day, the zombies are slow and they shamble around without much direction. But in the darkness of the night, they become sharper and more aggressive. Plus a new type of zombie comes out at night. One that can actually run, jump, and use these tendrils to grab their victims. It further pushes the avoid zombies at all cost approach that's encouraged throughout the game as they'll be seeking out human victims like guards on patrol in a stealth action game. It actually made this game even more terrifying to where I was always hoping that a mission would be set during the daytime, or at least that I had a source of light to defend myself, thus explaining the meaning behind the game's title, Dying Light. Her Joseph, I need you to go out there to get some supplies. In the daytime? No problem, slow, clumsy zombies. I got this. Who said anything about going in the daytime? It's nighttime now, genius, and we need those supplies ASAP! You want me to go out now? At night? Do I have to? Can't let the other camp get them first. You'll be fine. You've played Splinter Cell. Yeah, I did. That makes me feel so much better. Alright. Here I go. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> nice knowing you! <laughs> Sucker. These elements come together to make a game that's a great blend of survival horror, platforming, exploration, action, and crafting with a hint of RPG in the form of these separate skill trees to enhance abilities I previously mentioned. It made the game feel like a more realistic take on zombie survival horror. But Dying Light also takes things a step further with its online multiplayer. If you turn online on, other players can jump into your game to either help you in co-op or hurt you by invading your game as a fast zombie at night. Playing as a zombie in Dying Light feels more fleshed out than playing as the zombie modes in older survival horror games. That's due to the objectives you have as a zombie and your abilities. Seriously, playing as this kind of zombie is like playing as Carnage or something. This makes the world of Dying Light feel more, if you'll pardon the irony, alive. It's more layers of multiplayer than I expected to find in a game like this. And of course, if this kind of multiplayer annoys you and you just want to complete the story, you can always switch your game to single player only. Now, as this is the Platinum Edition, it comes with all the previously released DLC. That means a ton of costumes to wear, plus DLC missions like this one called Hell Raid, a bonus game based on an actual, albeit placed on hold, first person hack and slash game made by the same developers of Dying Light. Makes sense as you're killing zombies, but some skeletons made the cut too. Oh, what a happy Halloween this is. Spooky, scary skeleton. There's even a small collection of custom maps made by Dying Light fans, and credit to where credit's due, these are actually really creative. I've played one where I swam underwater to find the Fountain of Youth, and another one where I platformed in space. It's just too bad this is only a selection of custom maps the developers chose to make available in the Platinum Edition, as I would have loved a Time Slitters like Map Builder mode to make levels like these. But even so, there's a ton of stuff in this Platinum package. With how much is in Dying Light, this is a fantastic game for any survival horror fan. And at $50, it's an easy recommendation. Well, that's my review of Dying Light for the Nintendo Switch. I actually did trick-or-treat at Disneyland. It's more expensive, but much safer than trick-or-treating around a bunch of zombies. So I hope you all enjoyed this review. This weekend, Spooky Month will close out on Halloween with my review of Fatal Frame Made of Black Water for the Nintendo Switch. In the meantime, why don't you check out my previous reviews of Castlevania for the Nintendo 64 and Zombie U for the Wii U. See you all next time, and to all you kids out there returning to trick-or-treating this year, have a safe and happy Halloween. Stay safe out there!